I've had this channel for quite some time. And pretty much it's come to the point where I have been getting more and more into watches as of recently. Sorry about all the background noise. I don't really have an area set up for me to do videos and reviews right now, so I'm just utilizing my workbench in order to do videos. So, anyways, um, yeah, I've gotten to this point where I've pretty much collected so many watches and I've traded so many watches and I've sold so many watches that I just come to the conclusion that a lot of the watches that I have there aren't many reviews for and I want to be the individual to do some of those reviews. So I don't buy watches every day like most of the reviews you probably watch here on YouTube. That's fully understandable. I'm going to focus more on my collection as it grows. So um, this isn't going to be a uh, video day after day. I'm going to catch up with what collection I do have now and that'll probably grow as I'm continuing these videos because I'm going to be honest, I probably have anywhere from 20 to 30 different watches I can go through and review. Um, probably 15 to 20 of them are actually worth watching. The other ones are just junk watches and ones that I've collected over the years or got a goodwill or whatever. Um, so yeah, the first one I'm going to start off with, uh, first and for foremost, is the Wayfinder, the Momentum. And the Momentum Wayfinder GMT, um, I basically got an email sent to me from Momentum uh, saying that there was a pre-sale. Um, I didn't read the fine print and I thought it was an actual, you know, get in a few weeks kind of thing. But nope, turned into more like a month and a half, if not a little bit more. Um, so I finally do have it and I've been wearing it for pretty much the last week. Um, intermittently changing out some of my watches, but for the most part, I'd say 85% of the time I've been watching, or I've been wearing the... Uh, Momentum Wayfinder GMT. So I have a pretty good idea of how I like it. I'll be honest, I absolutely love it. I think it's a fantastic watch, but I don't want to put the cart before the horse. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So I've been rambling straight for about two minutes, so I'm going to have myself a little drink here. Again, this isn't going to be Teddy Baldus hair. Um, I don't have the production quality. I'm not going to go out and buy a Sony Nikon, whatever the hell camera. That's not what this is. My phone will do just fine. Um, I'll probably figure out a little bit of a better setting so that way I don't have this thing making noise in the background, but for the most part, this will do. So, <clears throat> Alright, so yeah, um, pretty much I came across Momentum first and foremost because I found a Vortec 2 and I thought it was a really cool watch. It had a full loom dial, um, it had a GMT movement, it had an alarm function, yet it was an analog watch, it had a day date function. Excuse me, actually, it was just a date function, not today. Um, but yeah, it came on a rubber strap, it had a PVD coated case, um, yeah, there was a lot that I really liked about it, um, but unfortunately, Momentum no longer carries the watch, um, so I kind of got this little itch in the back of my throat that I really wanted to get myself a Momentum eventually, um, Canadian brand, so it's pretty close to home, I, I'm in Wisconsin, so they're pretty much, you know, just north of me, so it was something that I kind of want to look into, they had really cool aesthetics, and the ch watches weren't, you know, cheaply made, and they weren't over priced and you know I really really liked what they did and uh, the Vortec was the one that I was introduced to first and yeah so I eventually ended up getting an actual momentum shortly after that it wasn't the Vortec unfortunately um, it was the Steelix Eclipse which is pretty much a analog face steel solar watch and it was uh, the first solar watch that wasn't a G-Shock um, so yeah I'm definitely love that watch and we'll get to that a little bit later um, we're still going to talk about the Wayfinder GMT first and foremost so yeah let's uh, let's talk about it and I'll do a little wrist check here so this is a watch that I'll do a review on probably I don't know a month or so once I get to some of my other watches but this is my deep blue master chrono 1000 yeah I know quite the name so um, but yeah it's basically a quartz chrono diver um, all the way, it's got up to like 300 meters, just more than any actual diver probably needs. Um, so I won't even get into it. Well, that's what the review is for, right? So we'll talk more about the actual re review about the Wayfinder GMT now. So, all right, so let's, let's get let's get into this. Yeah, I do vape, so I'm yeah. Like I said, I'm not gonna hold off. Still be very much me. But yeah, so. I'll kind of go over the specs and go over my take on everything. Um, I don't think you really need a wrist check, do you? I don't even know the size of my wrist like everyone else. Seven and a half, eight inch wrist. I don't really know. I'm not a small guy, but I'm not obese. So, I mean, my wrist size is you know, pretty normal. I don't know. Most of the watches that I have are on steel bands anyway, so I usually don't have to worry about sizing my wrist. 
I'm going to give you guys a view of the actual watch itself, and well, let's switch cameras. All right, and here is the Wayfinder GMT by Momentum, a little further up close here. So, yep, this is pretty much it. This is the full loom dial variant with the uh, silver or raw titanium case. We're pretty much going to go over all the different specs right now. So, this is a Swiss GMT quartz movement. It's specifically a Ronda 515.24H movement. It's got an anti-reflective sapphire crystal. I can't tell you if it's on the top or on the inside. I sure would hope it's the inside, but uh, I'm not sure if this fluorescent... Oh, gosh. I'm not sure if the... Yeah, having an issue because it's fluorescent or from right below the source light, but I honestly am never having any issues really with it on any given day. Um, yeah, so that was... The Sapphire Crystal, it's got a 100 meter water resistant, which is pretty much good for any diver. It's got a screw down crown with a red marker at the 4 o'clock position, which I really like. Um, a lot of companies like to use the rubber band um, for the red, but I like how they painted it on. And they do have the insignia on the crown, which I thought was a great touch. Um, the case itself is 40 millimeters, so it's a 40 millimeter case. And lug to lug is a 48 millimeters. So it's not too big for even smaller wrists, which is kind of nice. The strap size is 22. These are the khaki Cordura straps. This is the tan stitching that's in more of like the olive drab. I hope the camera's picking it up as well as I see it. It's really not khaki colored too much, to be honest. I was kind of disappointed that it didn't come as khaki as the website really showcased. It says moment momentum in the leather on the back right there. And it says Cordura with the 22, because these are 22 millimeter lugs. And these are 22 millimeter straps. This is the buckle. There is no insignia on it. Now I will admit that I do see insignia on Momentum's watches, watch bands, usually even the leather band that I purchased from them um, separately um, that has the Momentum logo, but not even on the inside. Yep. But I do think it gives it a little bit more of a professional touch, to be honest with you. And those are not scratches. I put Aquaphor on my hands because my hands are ungodly dry. That's the sheen that you see on my fingernails right there. It's the same thing that you're seeing on the actual... It's a high-polished strap buckle. So, anyways, moving along. Um, and one thing that I always want to mention when it comes to Momentum is they will engrave the backs of your watches for free. Or, I'm sorry, not for free. For $20. Oh, gosh. Yeah, don't shoot me in the foot. Yep, $20. But, yeah, it's pretty cheap. Um, and like I mentioned before, it's a titanium case, so it always has that bead blasted look you can kind of see there, which I honestly really love that look. I think it's great. Um, they use Super Luminova for the full loom dial. Um, absolutely love it, this full loom dial, which I'll show you some pictures in just a moment. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I think that they blew it out of the water. I think they did a fantastic job with this loom dial. Just fantastic. Um... But yeah, I already showed you the strap, um, and also when I purchased this, they offered the Goma rubber, the green and black Goma rubber, and then they also offered a brown leather strap with minimal stitching and a green web NATO. I went for the Cordura because I don't have any Cordura straps, and I didn't really know what they were. Now I do, and I kind of like them. I think they're fantastic. It's water resistant as well, so I thought that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Don't like specks of stuff on my straps. Um, anyway, so yeah, my take on everything. I'm kind of go went over the specs. Um, they also have the uh, yeah the syringe dial hands, which I've always been a big fan of the syringe dial hands. You can even see how it got that dip in there. I thought that was really nice. But usually they look just black, and then you kind of get that nuance of the contour within the actual hands themselves, especially that GMT. And I really like that one. Um, but yeah, so the second hand kind of reminds me also of my Orient Defender version 1, which I've always thought that, that was a really cool hand. Always thought that was neat. But they do have the 24-hour indices, so you can do military time, obviously, for the GMT purpose. Um, yeah, and it, uh, one, one thing that I also noticed is that it has a little bit of a sharp bezel um, right underneath here, this lip, if you can get it right there. So this lip right here... It's honestly kind of sharp. I mean, I've never cut myself on it, and I don't really see, foresee myself cutting myself on it, but just thought it was really sharp. It's only when you're kind of pulling up on it do you really feel it. But again, I have to touch base on the super bright 
full loom dial. It is absolutely a fantastic dial. Um, yeah, and I'll get that going in just a moment here. Um, again, I... And here's that full loom dial. So as you can tell, everything is legible, even up to that date window right there for the date. Absolutely fantastic. So you can see just how bright green that is. Legible across the board. There's no dull spots at all. It looks like it's indiglo almost. Absolutely fantastic. Way to go, Momentum. Again, I really like that red outline GMT hand. I feel like gives it, a, it pops it a little bit more and it matches that GMT. However, I did feel that the um, GMT down there underneath the wayfinder and the red on the hand, they don't match. The GMT kind of comes off as more of like a, a pink and this one comes off as more of like a deeper red. But still, it does it does kind of give you that aesthetic and you know it does look a little bit more matchy-matchy than I would hope you know to have seen. I also really like the shiny numerals. Um, I just like how they pop like that and just gives it a little bit more dynamic. Um, as you can see, the light shining over it and passing and kind of gives the watch a little bit more of a I'm alive aspect, kind of catches the eye. I really like that about the, the indices on here, the Arabic numerals. Um, yeah, and then also um, the crown, I really like it. I feel it's a really nice, sturdy, stiff crown. Don't really have any issues with it. I haven't had any issues with it quite yet. And then also the date window, if you can see that. I really like that they out outlined it. And I know they can't really match that loom. I mean, if they would have made a cool loom underneath so that the date would you know glow with it too, that would have been a real cool touch. But I can't blame them for, for just doing a white. But I really liked how they outlined it in the same paint that they use on the indices. I thought that was a real good touch. Um, kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. And it's in the place of where the military time would be for... Um, yeah, six right there. And then also at the well as well, you can see the 60, 55, 50 all around the edge just for easy kind of field watch accessibility. Um, yeah, and then also last but not least, it's a very accurate movement. Um, like I said, it's that Swiss Ronda movement. Um, even though the seconds timer is not exactly spot on, it is a set it and forget it kind of watch. You don't really have to look back at it unless you come across a 30-day month, then you might have to switch the date every other month or so, but honestly, it's not that, that big of a deal. Um, but I absolutely love this watch. I think it's a absolute run, home run. Uh, I think it was a 9 out of 10. Uh, there's a few little nitpick things here and there. Um, but for the most part, honestly, I love quartz watches, um, especially nicer ones with good movements. Um, yeah, and this is the third Momentum watch that I've received from them, and I absolutely love it. So thank you again, Momentum. Thank you guys for visiting. Um, I hope this was an informative review for you guys, and I hope you guys are staying happy and healthy out there. Thank you so much, and have yourself a great night.